Let's talk about the glucose clearance. Well, glucose clearance at normal plasma level ranges from 60 to 120. What is the normal glucose plasma level? The normal glucose plasma level is again the same thing that they mentioned, which is 60 to 120. Less than 100 is good, but 120 fine. But when you're greater than 126, you call it diabetes. But that also depends on if you're fasting or if it's random, you're looking at greater than 200. But that's another story. Here we're talking about glucose clearance. Glucose at normal plasma level, range from 60 to 120, is completely reabsorbed in proximal cannula tubule PCT by sodium glucose uh, transport. Sodium glucose transport. Remember that sodium glucose transport? Sodium glucose transport. SGLT2s. Where do you have SGLT1 in the intestine? where you have the sodium and glucose transporting within the intestines. Where do you have two? In the kidney. Where? In the PCT. What are they doing? They are reabsorbing most of your uh, sodium and most of your glucose. Okay. Uh, so in adults, so they are saying what, what they just said over there, that if you have 60 to 120 plasma level, they are completely, you're reabsorbing all that glucose, all that glucose that is, in your, in, that is going to the urine, getting reabsorbed back. And what was reabsorption? Reabsorption meaning reabsorption. Everything from urine uh, in the tubules in the urine getting back into the blood. That is called reabsorption. Reabsorbing all that glucose. So nothing it goes out in urine. Now, in adults, the plasma glucose of 200 glucosuria begins, this is the threshold, 200 is the threshold at a rate of, at a, so 200 is the threshold, but at the rate of 375, you have been saturated. All transporters are fully saturated. That means, let's say you have, a, a, let's say you only have 375, I'll give you an example, you have only 375 SGLTs, and they are working to to bring those back into the blood, they're all used up, they're all saturated. So if you have now 400 glucose level, that excess 25 has to go in urine because they can't absorb, they can't reabsorb that excess 25 because you don't even have the channels for it. So, so here the case is saturation. They have the, those channels have been saturated they're working so, so hard and so much, they're like, man, you got to be kidding me. Can't work for you. Either pay me more, give me some protein, man. I'm done with this glucose. I'm just kidding here. But uh, they become saturated and they uh, are fully saturated at the TM, max TM. Now here, normal pregnancy associated with increase in GFR, which is normal. With increase in filtration of all substances, including the glucose, the glucose threshold occurs at a lower plasma concentration, leads to glucosuria at the normal plasma glucose levels. You get the point? The point is, in pregnancy, you have increase in GFR. With increase in filtration, the glucose threshold occurs at lower plasma concentration now. Why? Because you have glucose so, so much coming most of the time for filtration by increasing GFR, increasing filtration, that they, these transporters get, get saturated before even they hit 375, right? So because they get saturated, those female pregnant women become they go into glycosuria at normal plasma glucose levels because those that are these are become saturated so let's talk about this now sodium glucose co-transport two inhibitors flows in drugs result in glucosuria well when you're inhibiting the uh, uh, sodium and glucose transport you inhibit these, let me actually draw a real thing here. 
you have the, the this is the tubule in which you have reabsorption from this channel, which is sodium glucose transport uh, SGLT2, uh, in which they're going to pick up that sodium, pick up that glucose, and bring it into the blood. But now when you knock these off by giving the drugs, well, the sodium, well, sodium might reabsorb later on, but the glucose is going to go in urine call leading to glucosuria at a plasma concentration less than 200 at a plasma concentration of anything actually because you're inhibiting those drugs right okay now looking at the right side what do we have we say that we have this thing glucosuria is an important clinical clue to diabetes diabetes mellitus now let's look at the display phenomena. TM for glucose is reached gradually rather than the sharply due to heterogeneity of the nephron. Example, i.e. different TM points. Because there is a heterogeneity of nephrons, they have all different TM. They have all, all the saturation levels are different for different points of saturation level for different nephrons because they're hetero due to heterogeneity represented by the portion of the titration curve between the threshold and TM and the display is right here so it's not that okay you are going and then uh, uh, you hit your TM but there's a splay there's a there's a splay there, right? So what is the splay again? Splay is your TM for glucose to reach gradually due to heterogeneity for the level of glucose reabsorption. Okay. So look, I'm gonna be I'm gonna do and uh, so here's the normal glucose levels. Adrenal threshold is to two hundred, right? And this threshold gives you right here. After this point, all of this is splay. And what is splay? Splay means that your saturation would be reached gradually. Look, gradually. Instead of just reaching ping. You're gradually you're reaching towards the saturation instead of just hitting the mark say this let's say this is this right here 375 right let's just say this is 375 and you go from here you hit that point and you say that's it but here on the other hand let me change color show you from from 200 threshold you're going in gradual gradually going up 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 up, up and then hitting the mark of 375 you're not going this way as i mentioned straight up to 375 and why is that that is due to the heterogeneity of the nephron because every nephron has different points for the level of glucose they can reabsorb some might have 200 some might have uh, 375 some might just have 400 or something so that's why you see a gradual increase that's called splay phenomena okay some other important points are the amino acids they get reabsorbed in PCT yeah we know that in heart nub disease heart nub disease there's a deficiency of tryptophan transporter tryptophan transporter deficiency which leads to no tryptophan because the tryptophan uh, transporter deficiency right which leads to no tryptophan which causes inability to make niacin to perform a fan needed for niacin so you can make niacin which leads to plagra plagra causes diarrhea dermatitis dementia but the important point why i mentioned all of this heart nerve disease it's due to the fact that amino acids are reabsorbed in pct there's a pct call uh, pct disease called heart nerve disease one more extra point is in early diabetes 
you have an increase in GFR due to hypertrophy or glomeruli, glomeruli after five years. So, uh, wait, early diabetes leads to you have increase in GFR. Why do you have increase in GFR due to hypertrophy of glomeruli? But after five years, there's an eventual decrease in GFR and there's an albinuria.